Hi, this is Jen Schaefer, and this is the first episode in a new series of planner videos. In this series, I will be doing a mix of plan with me's, monthly layouts, and such using a variety of supplies in my Erin Condren vertical planner. I'm new to planning in a planner, so I'm hoping that this will be beneficial for those who are new to planners who want to learn as I do, as well as more veteran planners who want to see new ideas and techniques as I define my personal style. For the month of April, my goal is to make use of the sticker sheets that come in the back of the planner. To start off, I'm using these plain rounded rectangle boxes to make some headers. They're a little bigger than the headers in the planner and were likely meant to be used for events, but I like the colors and size, so I went for it. The days in the planner are broken into three sections. You have a limitless number of options for what you want to do with these, but I decided that for starting out, the typical options of today, to do, and little things would work for me right now. For this week, I decided to use a single color for each section. Today in teal, to do in purple, and little things in pink. This week happens to be Easter, so I went with some fun bright colors that I think will work well for the theme I have in my head. Once the headers are finished, it's time to put them into the planner. I start with the left page putting today in the top section, to do in the middle, and little things towards the bottom. Just this small addition already makes a big difference on the page and adds a nice pop of color. With the headers in place, I started to fill in the planner. For today's layout, I started with Lawn Fawn Stamp Set Lovable Legends. I used the star from the set in the top two sections to make my checklist. Then I'm using a set of footprints for my step tracker in the little things section. The pair of footprints is a little large for what I wanted to do, so when I ink up the stamp, I'm being careful to only ink up the left foot. This leaves me plenty of space to track my steps. My goal with steps is to hit at least 10,000 steps each day, but I've gotten back into walking recently, so I've gotten a little easy on myself starting out. Keeping up with my son has usually gotten me over at least 5,000, though. I'm also taking it easy starting out because my husband and I are expecting our second son in August. That's actually one of the main reasons I wanted to start this planner. I haven't had a really good way to keep track of all the fun things we've been doing with my oldest son, but I want to have a method in place of keeping track of all these memories before I have even less time with two kids around. Plus, with having an infant and a toddler this fall, I'm going to be, have to be a master of planning if I want to be ready for the holidays. Now I'm taking the fun banner cut stickers to highlight a few things this week. Sunday is Easter, and Friday we will be 22 weeks along in this pregnancy. Sorry the planner's a bit off screen, I'll definitely be working on that. Something worth pointing out is, when working with gel pens, that they need to stay a few seconds to dry. I didn't wait long enough before picking up the Easter banner, so I had a little bit of cleaning up to do. I took one more banner to create a header in my sidebar. For now I'm going to use this section to keep track of events that were happening next week. Coming up, we have a couple of appointments, and it's also my sister's birthday. I sent out a card in a package this week, so I don't have anything to plan ahead for that, though. Next, I'm going to work on some of the design elements for the card. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Stamp Set's Party Animal and Holiday Party Animal to make a fun little Easter egg hunt in my planner. To color these images, I'm using a 12-pack of colored pencils from Prismacolor. This is an inexpensive set of colored pencils, and I think it has a nice mix of colors that can go a long way. The first animal I'm coloring is the reindeer. I wanted to color him in shades of brown, but with only two browns in the set, I decided to use a few more colors to add some depth. For the face and stomach, I started off with canary yellow, then went over it with sienna brown to add some shading as well as tone back the brightness of the yellow. Then I moved on to coloring the body of the reindeer. I started with a single layer of sienna brown. Then this gets a base color down, but if you compare it to the face of the reindeer, you can tell it's missing a lot of depth. To build up the color, I found that making multiple layers with a light hand gives me the best results. So in the areas where I wanted more shading, such as under the arms and chin, I go in with a darker color, dark brown. When I'm happy with this, I go in with the sienna brown again to help blend the colors together, as well as make the color a little richer and darker in general. If you wanted even more contrast, you could even go in with a black pencil and add some more shading in the shadows. For the hooves, I started with dark brown, then I added black for some shading. This gives them a dark rich color that helps them stand out from the color of the body. I use the same color combination to fill in the reindeer's antlers. To finish off the main reindeer, I added some red to fill in the ears. Because this is such a small area, I only used one color. For a final touch, I went in with my white colored pencil. This color helps lighten the areas that should get more of a highlight, as well as helps blend areas where the colors are a bit far apart, like the brown and yellow I used for the stomach and the face, as well as the underside of the tail. 
To finish off this part of the image, I picked out colors for the various Easter eggs from the remaining colors. Based on what I have available, as well as the colors I had already used in my planner, I decided the best color combination would be green, blue, and purple. For the green, I used apple green and grass green. For the blue, I used true blue and violet blue. And then for the purple, I used violet and violet blue. Violet blue is a nice dark color that works well for shading both the blue and purple colors. To shade the eggs, I put the darker colors towards the outside and the lighter colors towards the middle to give the eggs a rounded shape. I wanted to add a few small details to finish off the images. Any spots where I colored over ink with the white colored pencil, I went in and redefined the stamp lines with a sharpie. This makes these features stand out again after the white pencil dulled them out. Next I went in with my white gel pen and added details to the easter eggs. Just some small dots or lines over the colored pencil can bring something extra special to these small shapes. When I finished with this, I cut out the animals and the eggs. My next step was to decide where I wanted to put the stickers I made. I started by laying them out to see where I wanted them and moved them until I thought I would be happy. While decide where I wanted these to go, I left the backing paper on the sticker so I had plenty of opportunity to change my mind. I decided I want to keep the larger animals towards the bottom of the page because that's where I have the most open space, then use the two birds and all of the easter eggs to fill an empty space towards the top. Because this is a planner for last week, I know that there won't be any new tasks or events, so I can fill in as much empty space as I want. It's around this time that I decided I needed something towards the bottom to add an additional pop of color. You could easily fill in this space with washi tape, but I don't have any available yet, so I decided to continue my theme of colored pencils. I put in a rough sketch of a line of grass towards the bottom of the page with my sharpie marker, then filled in the space with apple green colored pencil, adding upward flicks of grass green pencil to give the space some texture. Unfortunately, the planner was out of scope of my camera at this time, so you won't be able to see the effect in the video. When I was cutting out the birds for my planner, I chose to remove their legs because they are so thin and difficult to cut around. To add them back in, I drew two straight lines directly in my planner, then I removed the backing paper and stuck down the bird. This is much simpler than cutting out the legs, and is rather difficult to notice unless you're looking for it. To finish off my design, I had two open to-do sections with nothing in them. I wanted to do something to fill in the white space. I decided my best course of action was to mimic the striped design of the eggs. I took a ruler and drew several vertical lines in the box with various distances between them. When I was happy with how this looked, I got out my colored pencils again. I chose the same green, blue, and purple shades I had chosen before to continue with my color scheme. I started by putting down a layer of light green in every third stripe. When I was happy with my level of coverage, I started adding shading with the darker green. Like with the eggs, I had the darker colors only towards the left side and right side, still trying to achieve a more rounded shape. I really liked the look I got with this technique. I continued doing the same thing for the blue and purple stripes, adding more layers of coverage until I was happy with the effect. As one final detail, I finished off by adding the same dotted lines to these stripes that I added to most of the eggs. I love how tiny additions like this can really take something simple and make it look more detailed. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed watching my purse planner episode. Be sure to check the description for further details and I hope to see you again next time.